Hey, it's Pastor Mike. I'll keep this short because I know you want to listen to today's message. You're here because you want to continue growing in your faith, and we at Time of Grace want the exact same thing for you. Just visit us at timeofgrace.org, and you'll find a ton of resources at your fingertips, like sermons, videos, books, devotions, our blog, and of course, more podcasts. See you there. Tom Holland, the actor who plays Spider-Man in the movies, recently came out on social media to reveal that he's taking a break from social media because of his mental health. And what Tom and other big time celebrities are doing is, is putting a spotlight on the reality that this age old truth that our mind and our body coexist, they're one and the same. And if one's misfiring, it affects the other one. The, the fact that mental health has been a huge topic recently is, is very important because anxiety and depression has been going through the roof, especially because of the pandemic. All the things like uh, isolation, lockdowns, economic insecurity. We have decision fatigue, and you mix that all together with what's going on in our society right now, it's enough to cause anyone to feel hopelessness. The sad thing about feeling sad, though, is that a lot of people don't feel comfortable talking about their sadness. There's still this stigma around that if you deal with hopelessness, loneliness, depression, anxiety, then you must be weak-minded, or even worse, maybe you lack faith. What I want you to know is that If you have any of those feelings, it does not mean that you're weak-minded. It does not mean that you're lacking in faith. What it means is this. You're a human. And that's why I want to share with you today King David's story. King David was the second king that ruled over Israel. He took over for King Saul. Uh, His claim to fame was he took down the great uh, giant Goliath with a slingshot. He was in these battles, multiple battles, hand to hand. Uh, he was, uh, they'd sing songs about him. Saul has killed his thousands, David his tens of thousands, right? He was a man's man. But did you also know that David was a poet? He wrote poetry. And his poems are recorded for us in the book of Psalms. And in those, sometimes he expresses joy and happiness. Sometimes he talks about his loneliness and, and anxiety and his depression. And what I appreciate about David is he gives words to the human experience. He expresses that there are highs and there are lows, and he gives us permission to talk about these things. What I love most about David's writings about his Psalms is that he reminds us that there still is hope in the midst of our hopelessness. And an example of that is, is found for us in Psalm chapter 13. David writes, How long, Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How Long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say, I have overcome him. And my foes will rejoice when I fall. So David is mad. He's angry. He's sad. And you know who he's talking to? The Lord God. (laughs) He's like, where are you? Where have you been? I've been praying. I don't hear from you. You're not answering my prayers. I'm not feeling great. My enemies are about to kill me. I'm going to die here, God. What's going on? You ever feel that way? You ever feel low? You ever feel like God's not listening to your prayers? That God's not there? He's abandoned you? Well, guess what? There's lots of men and women of faith who have felt that same exact way. David, according to the Bible, was a man after God's own heart. He had this amazing relationship with God. And yet, what does he do? He vents to the Lord. He gets this angst off his chest. And and what he does is give us permission that, that when we're going through those hard times, he's reminding us that you don't need to bottle it up. You shouldn't bottle it up because if you do, you're gonna implode or explode. But God allows us to just get it off our chest. He can take it. And, and once David did that, once he got all of his complaints off his chest, he brought it before the Lord, this change happened. And you see it in the final two verses. This is what he says. But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise for he has been good to me. So once David processed this, he talked about it, he validated what he was feeling, he got it off his chest, he was finally able to see, wait a second, God hasn't left me. God's always been with me. God is still my salvation and he has been good to me. The reality is, is that God has still been good to you, whether you feel like it or not. And what I love about David's words here is that his transparency has encouraged me. I'm somebody who has dealt with bouts of anxiety 
and depression. And what this has given me is confidence to be able to speak to God about it, to get it off my chest, to, to go to fellow Christians and say, look, I'm, I'm struggling. Can you help me? Can you pray with me? This is what God is doing. He's giving us the opportunity to say, yeah, life is real, life is hard. I have my highs, I have my lows. And so right now, you have permission, no matter what's going on in your life, take it to God, vent, get it off your chest, and then remember that God is with you. He has not abandoned you, he's right there with you, and he's using these, even these difficult times for your good and for your salvation. And how do I know that? because God sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die in darkness for you so that he could give you the light of eternal life. The Lord is with you. He is your salvation. And when you go through this process, my prayer for you is that you, at the end of the day, will be able to rejoice with David and, and, and sing and, and rejoice with your heart that God is your salvation. Let's pray. God, Thank you for being so big. Thank you that we can talk to you honestly, that we don't have to bottle these things up. Thank you that, that we can be transparent with you. Thank you for this example that David gave us in Psalm 13. And Lord, we pray that you would fill us with hope and understanding that even though we may be going through dark times, that you have good for us, that you are our light in this darkness. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.